Alright, in case you're wondering why it got so quiet all of a sudden, it's because the fans are off. The system's off. I just want to show you guys the Tim application. So I'm finished with the stock testing. And uh, that's how it looks. So I'm pretty sure I did it right. If the shadow decides to move. And that's the uh, heat sink. Looks pretty standard to me. Uh, now I'm about to commit sacrilege. These are my sexual gloves. Not really, just uh, latex. I didn't want to touch the contact points of the CPU. It's going to be really gentle with it. Here's a cutter. And I'm going to slowly, I mean, look away if you think this is sacrilege, which it probably is, but I'm doing it in the name of science or in the interest of science. Gonna have to get it in somehow that I won't damage the vapor. It's really tight. Painful. Still some thermal residue. Don't want to get it on the pens. I don't think this is the best idea. Uh, Oh, by the way, yes, it's not fake. It's a 3770K. And uh, I think I'll just better do it off camera. So I managed to uh, take the IHS it's, uh, internal heat spreader out. As you can see, it's not fake. 3770K. And I tell you that this piece of wafer, it weighs nothing. <laughs> this is quite a heavy piece of metal, the IHS, but... Did they say IH, IHF? I don't know, it's past 1 a.m., I'm very tired. All right, so I'm about to clean the residue. I just hope I haven't damaged the wafer too badly. Uh, so I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, good news, uh, you won't believe this, but check out the low temperatures, uh, one of the cores dropped down to 14, that's almost, that's more than 10 degrees below ambient and idle, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable, so I'm kind of happy already as it is, uh, I got uh, high hopes for this, so I'm just gonna, you know, it's on stock again. Everything's on stock. Uh, memory 1333, not important. 1.1 volts, 3.9, 3.9 gigahertz. Uh, just the stock. Everything's on stock. And uh, let's see the temperatures. Huh. Well, not that great, but I think a bit lower. I have to see the screenshots. Of the original test. Sorry it took me that long. I'm thinking about a lot of things. Anyways, it's uh, pointless talking about temperatures right now. I'm just going to out here and come back in 10 minutes all right guys the tests have been going for a little over 10 minutes just gonna stop it and uh, see so yeah, 11 minutes temperatures are lower on average than it was before I'm surprised that I'm, I'm quite surprised it's not as uh, much it's uh, the difference isn't as 
It's a, it's kind of marginal at this point, but I'm guessing if I load the overclock profile, it'll be widened. And uh, I I I uh, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. I'm just I'm just, it's 1:30 in the morning. I'm I'm, I'm out of brain power. I'm uh, starting to stutter. Right, so uh, I will do a roundup of all the temperatures and the differences between the default mode, i.e. normal temp, the one that Intel provides, at the end of all the tests, so I'll be back with the OC profile. Okay, final test for tonight anyway, the OC profile is loaded, 4.2 GHz, 1.27 volts uh, droop, so uh, it's not that much, 1600, 686 and the uh, idle clocks are pretty pretty cool actually cooler than before if I recall correctly I'm just gonna start to test see the starting temperatures right so uh, around 70 right now I'm uh, Okay, 71, yeah. Well, the hottest core with the original TEM got up to 81 degrees, so, you know, anything below that is worth it to me. There's no point wasting your time, uh, guys, so I'm just going to stop it here and come back in 10 minutes. Kudos. Alright, final test for tonight is finished. Final temperatures 68, 77, 76, 70. About 5 degrees average cooler. <clears throat> and let's stop the test. That's proof as I know a lot of people ask for it. Or ask for it. 11 minutes. It's not nearly enough but you know I was just doing it on short notice and I don't have much time tonight so as you can see it's past midnight. So yeah, now it's time for me to cut the camera off, put all the screenshots together, and show you the average difference. Okay guys, this is the final result. As you can see, the one on the left is the default, I mean, untouched CPU. The average idle for that test was 24.25 degrees. Uh, ju just remember, uh, the ambient temperature was pretty much static through the whole test. 20, 25.5 to 26 degrees, it's still 25.5, it hasn't changed at all. So yes, uh, idle average 24.25, uh, load average 56 degrees. For the modified one, which I used the MX4 temp, the idle is a 20.5, which is 3.75 degrees cooler at idle, and the uh, average under load is 54, which is 2 degrees cooler than the stock unmodified processor. Now this is uh, these settings are for the stock Prime 95 test, as everything is running on stock basically 3.9 gigahertz. The next test. next result basically but this is for the overclock 4.2 gigahertz 1.27 volts on the left the idle temperatures average 27.75 degrees and the low temperature averages 77.75 uh, degrees for the modified chip uh, the idle temperatures average is 26.75 degrees, which is a full degree cooler than the idle of unmodified chip. And the load, here's the where it's get, uh, get interesting, gets interesting. Average 72.75, a full 5 degrees cooler than the stock unmodified chip. So I guess I've proved the point. Uh, it wasn't the gain wasn't that much but there was certainly a gain so Intel you gotta step up your game you don't use crappy Tim to get something 
at least half decent. Five degrees is a lot, and I do mean a lot. And I don't. The application on the IHS that I did with the MX4, it wasn't perfect. I think I used a bit too much. Uh, so yes, this is with the bare chip connected to the uh, IHS with uh, MX4 and the IHS connected to the heatsink with also MX4 so you got two layers of paste which is inefficient I tried to use just the bare chip without any IHS that's the heatsink uh, uh, without the chip hit heatsink and sadly uh, the mounts on the H50 are so that you can't exert any pressure on it without the IHS so I couldn't even make contact with it. The CPU overheated and the computer shut down in a matter of a second, literally. So I gotta have to repeat these tests probably with one of my air coolers. Uh, maybe the uh, Polymatic Mega Helms tomorrow or today. It's past midnight, as I said. So, yes, a, a full 5 degrees at 1.27 volts was the gain from this chip, anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, peace out.